The consequences of not having a vibrant civic life are that the status quo will remain the same. But if you're someone that needs or feels that things have to change, you have to be involved or else someone else will make the decisions for you. Someone can be born through no fault of their own um, and have a lack of opportunity and systems that are weighed against them. And you can have someone literally five blocks away that has all the opportunity in the world. Our work is critical in an era of mass incarceration, the school to prison pipeline, the criminalization of youth and people of color. Young people are being sucked in to a system that is not letting them out. So right now the healthcare system is extremely fragmented and in, in many ways it's broken, right? We, we could, we, it'd probably be better to call it a sick care system instead of a healthcare system. The latest data actually shows that people are now worried more about the cost of their healthcare in this country than they are about getting sick. We lack an understanding across the larger community about what it's like to be a racial and ethnic minority in Fort Collins, Colorado, where it's a world-class city. We have families here at the Family Center who say, I wish I felt as welcome out in Fort Collins as I do when I walk in the doors here. I'm Evan, I run an organization called Warm Cookies of the Revolution. Why are civic issues not marketed, publicized, the same way that arts, comedy, music, sports, church shopping are? There's no reason that at a city council meeting you can't, first off, that the time of it could be varied. It could be in different parts of the city. You can have a band play beforehand, or whatever anyone in a neighborhood would want. You can make civic life more accessible. I'm Eddie Cohen, I'm the Chief Impact Officer at Mile High United Way. The biggest problems that we face as the United Way is looking at the metro area and how do we create a place that's, that has inclusive growth. When we think about our programs, we're really trying to concretize love um, to those who need more of it, to those that have the absence of love. At the end of the day is how do we share compassion as an organization. I'm Joe Salmon. Executive Director of Center for Health Progress. So the three things that we think um, are most important currently are to expand coverage options for immigrants without documentation in Colorado. The second one is to shift payment models in the healthcare system from a fee-for-service model to a value-based payment model. And then the third one is to catalyze a culture shift in the healthcare to get the healthcare system to really understand and healthcare leaders to understand that they need to put more attention to the upstream factors in our society that really drive ill health. My name is Angel Perez and I'm the Executive Director of Colorado Circles for Change. So at Colorado Circles for Change, um, we have a variety of programs. Our staple program is our Restore program. Essentially, they get their tickets expunged and they're able to sever their relationship with the juvenile justice system. We also have our Youth Leadership Institute where we have um, rites of passage programs. We have our mentoring program, and then we have a program that specifically focuses on developing activists to be able to dismantle racism in their communities. So, what are some things that we can do on an individual basis to begin to dismantle those things? That bigotry, that hatred, that racism, sexism, elitism, and change the narrative. Yes. I'm Deirdre, and I am the director of the Family Center La Familia, and I am a passionate advocate for children, zero to five, for community, and for strengthening families to build strong communities. We would be doing a disservice if we were not also looking at the root causes of why people are coming in our doors, and how do we help change the systems that are impacting those root causes. What are we doing to shape policy change at the city level around affordability of housing or accessibility of transit? If we're distributing bus passes to people, for example, then we also need to be on the front lines advocating for seven days a week, 365 day bus service. Measuring success is who is taking part 
and who has voice at our programs and who's requesting that we do things with them, the more that that is representative of our community, the more successful we are. What I really think about is it's those individual stories. Um, when someone calls and they're dealing with an issue of domestic violence and we have an operator that sits on the phone with them for an hour to walk them through the steps of how do they become self-sufficient. It's really those personal one-on-one -on -one stories, I think, that really drives us and I think where we can say, yeah, we're doing the right thing. I think it's completely within the realm of possibility for us to have a healthcare system that's integrated with the community in a more deep way that actually focuses on building positive health outcomes and not just preventing sickness. When I mean, we have the resources, right? At this point, it's really just a matter of political will and reimagining what's possible. By providing these very intentional transformative programs, we will see young people being able to continue to have healthy relationships. We will see them thrive and graduate and move on to college, move on to career, and do powerful, amazing things in the community. If we invest in kids and families, we're going to see these outcomes. Improved health, improved education, improved labor force, improved earning potential, like all these things. We're doing it right here, every day. The fact that I'm sitting here goes to show you the importance of having programs like Colorado Circles for Change. I could have very well went down a completely different path, and I believe it's because community stepped up to support me. And therefore, I feel like I have a sense of responsibility to give back.